Hello, welcome to Oxford Heirlooms. Today we're going to do some prep work on our pattern pieces so that in the next video we can pleat them. I've got my two front pieces, my back piece, my sleeve piece, and the guide which will be my tea cap bonnet. Now what I realized when I cut this material out is that my fabric was 60 inches wide and this was such an old fabric pattern that I think it called for narrower fabric. Okay, so just so that you know, I'm changing the materials list. You can get away with one yard of Swiss Batiste rather than one and five eighths yard. If you've got the extra five, five eighths of an inch, five eighths of a yard of Swiss Batiste already, um, there is a diaper cover in this pattern um, that you can make. Okay, so the fabric won't go to waste. Okay, so I just thought I would mention that. Okay, so now today I'm not gonna be working with my tea cap or slip. Well, yes, I will be working with my sleeve. Okay, but I'm going to start with the back of my fabric. And what I need to do is I need to transfer some pattern markings. Okay, um, you'll notice I have my pattern actually pinned to my fabric. Um, I have a friend who told me she was trying to cut out infant garments using pattern weights, and I, I, I don't recommend that uh, because you have much more control over shaping the armholes and the neck holes if you use pins. I would also recommend highly recommend that you get yourself a really good pair of dressmaker scissors. These are made by Ginger, and the reason I like them is they have a little bit of a spring action, so when I'm cutting around tiny little curves, um, the scissors slightly open up a little bit for me and save some work on my hands. So I will put a link below for some scissors because, um, you know, uh, I'm not sure if they're available at all the big box stores. I think they used to be, but I'm not sure if they're still available. Okay, so preparing my pattern pieces. I'm starting with the back piece, so I need to transfer some pattern markings. Up here at the top, I'm sure you can see this, but there are some dots. Um, I guess maybe they thought we were gonna pick these pleats up by hand, uh, but we're not. We're gonna use a pleating machine. But I need to mark the area. I've used a straight pin and I've cut a little hole in my fabric. So using my fabric marking pin, I'm gonna draw a dot that goes through to the back side and that's gonna represent my bottom row of smocking on the garment, okay? Now I'm going to take my pins out of my pattern piece so I can continue to prepare this back piece, okay? Oh, I'm gonna make one more mark because, you know, in addition to the mark that is the bottom smocking row, there is a top corner, so that's gonna give us a rectangle that we're gonna to wanna to smock inside of. So I'm gonna move that pattern piece aside for just a minute. Now I'm gonna work sideways for just a minute because I need to have a better angle. Now you'll notice my blue marks uh, showed up on the right and the left side of the back going across the center back, okay? Now I'm gonna use my straight edge I'm gonna flatten my fabric out because I got a bit of a crease right there in the center. And at the top two marks, I'm gonna draw a line between both of the top two marks to represent the top of the smocking. And on the bottom mark, because I'm going to want to use this bottom row to guide my first pleating needle, I'm gonna make a mark from the edge of the sleeve hole going through the holes all the way to the other sleeve hole. And then, since I need to know where to pull my pleating threads out to create my rectangle to smock inside of, I'm gonna draw another line between the top two marks that I made. Okay, so on the back of this fabric, what we have now is we have a line 
Let me see if you can see this. We have a line along the bottom of the smocking area that extends from the sleeve hole to the sleeve hole. And then we have a little rectangle marked that's gonna represent the area we will smock in. So I will set that aside. Okay, now the next pattern piece that we're gonna work, I think, hold on, just a second, let me work with the sleeve because it's a little bit easier. Got a little bit less work to do. Okay, so I'm gonna mark along the top of the sleeve, there's an X that marks where I'm supposed to gather between, up at the top of the sleeve. There are also a couple of little X's that represent where we're going to gather along the bottom of the sleeve. So, like I think I've mentioned before, Swiss Batiste is pretty thin, and if you press, you know, pretty significantly with your fabric marking pen, it will go through both layers. So, and then the other thing I'm going to do, since I need to mark the center of the sleeve, and this sleeve is, as I'm looking at it, it appears to be symmetrical. So I'm gonna mark up at the bottom center so that I can gather that later on, and I'm gonna mark up at the top center. Okay, so I have transferred those, those pattern markings. Now this particular sleeve doesn't tell me what's the front or what's the back. So I don't have to worry about making mirror image sleeves. Apparently this particular sleeve is going to be, um, works either way. So I'm gonna set that pattern piece aside. Now I'm gonna work with the front pattern piece, okay? Now I have to make some marks um, up at the top, after we smock, we're gonna have to gather some fabric. So I'm gonna mark those two gathering spots up at the top. And then you, I have made a little hole at the bottom and I'm making a dot up at the top. This is gonna denote the area that I smock in. Now this smocking, is going to be very similar to the smocking that we did for project number two, a day gown for a little lady, since we're going to have smocking on both sides of the bucket button placket and on the back of the garment. Okay, now a couple of other marks I need to make. I need to mark the top of these buttonholes. Now, as I'm looking at this, these buttonholes look like they are 3 8 inch buttonholes, but it is my preferred method to do quarter inch buttons and quarter inch buttonholes. I'm also gonna mark the line that denotes the fold line for the front facing of the garment. And again, down here at the bottom, the line that represents the fold line for the front facing of the garment. Okay, is there anything else I need to mark on this? No, I don't think so. Okay, so I'm gonna take my pins out Set my pattern piece aside. Okay, now, like I did on the back of the garment, I'm gonna line up these two bottom smocking positions, and I'm gonna draw a line from the armhole all the way to the front edge of the facing, okay? And then I'm gonna draw a line between the top two marks, and then draw a line between the bottom mark and the top mark. Okay, so that gives me a guide. Let me see if you can see this. Okay, this gives me a guide. This bottom line, I will line up with my first needle in my pleating machine when I run it through the pleater. Now, let me turn this over. Uh, because I didn't press hard enough for it to come through. So I need to make the same markings on the other, on the, I've got, I've, I've got to have mirror image sides. I need to have a right side and a left side. So I'm going to transfer my pattern, pattern markings for my smocking area on the back of this garment. Okay, 
So now I've got my two front pieces marked. I've got my fold lines marked. I've got my button hole, the top of the buttonhole positions marked. I've got my smocking area marked. On my sleeve, I've marked the area to be gathered top and bottom. I also folded it in half so that I would have a spot to line up the top shoulder seam and a, a, a dot in the front and the bottom center so that I can um, gather it and attach it to the entredeau and ruffled lace that we're gonna use. And then we have the back piece, which is marked with a line all the way across that I can follow with my pleating machine. So in the next video, we will be pleating fabric, but in this video, we were, prepare we were preparing fabric. And once again, I just want to mention, um, you can get away with one yard of Swiss Batiste rather than one and five eighths of an inch, one, one and five eighths yard of fabric. And if you've already got your extra five eighths of a yard, I would recommend making a diaper cover. And lastly, I highly recommend getting yourself a good pair of fabric cutting scissors. And I really like these that have the spring action in them. It's got a little hook that actually keeps them closed. Okay, but I'll put a link to those scissors down below. Okay, but that's what we're doing today. Thank you.